Hello. I recently, like everyone else in the world, binge watched uh, Tidying Up with Marie Kondo on Netflix. So prior to binge watching, I was already a Marie Kondo convert. She's basically my Oprah. And I wrote an article for The Federalist on seven tips to help you tidy up after binge watching um, Tidying Up with Marie Kondo. And I just thought I would go into a little bit more detail about what I wrote and I'll also put a link to the article just so you can see it. But first off the bat, before we get to the tips and all of that stuff, um, let me talk about the misconceptions. And the biggest one is really about books. And if you've watched the whole series, then you know to ignore the fake news about Marie Kondo saying, you know, get rid of any books more than 30 or, you know, get rid of your books or whatever. Um, because you've seen where in one episode there was a woman whose husband had passed away and she was downsizing and was basically... You could tell she wanted to let go of the books because most of them were not hers. She was just sort of looking for someone else to say it's okay, or at least that was my impression of, of the show. In another one, um, there was a, a younger man who had a copy of To Guilt a Mockingbird that he's had since high school and it spoke to him and et cetera, et cetera. And she encouraged him to keep it, that it was fine, even though it was just a cheap paperback book, um, that if it brought him joy, then he should keep it. So, fake news. If the book thing is what's stopping you from tidying up, regardless of whether you use the condo method, just ignore it. Um, because tidying up is about saving time in the long run. It's not, it doesn't have anything to do with cleaning um, or anything like that. Uh, so, I've gone through the process one and I'll say a third time. <laughs> I'm right in the middle of the second time. And it's amazing, like there was only probably a year and a half in between. Um, it's amazing like how much more stuff you find. And it's not like newly purchased stuff. A lot of it is just, for some reason I was holding on to it before. And the second time around, I'm like, yeah, I haven't thought of you, seen you in the last year. And now I definitely am ready to part with you, vase with flowers given to me by an ex seven years ago. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Actually, I'm not kidding. I'll ha uh, I'm gonna insert a photo right now of my vase collection. And I tried to get rid of dupes, <laughs> um, but I still have too many. I don't know why, because so many of these vases are specific to the arrangement and I'll never do that arrangement myself. So I don't know why I'm holding on to them. I'm gonna have to like maybe once a month go through the vase collection. Um, the problem is I have too much storage and that's actually one of one of the, the things in my, my tips. So let me get to the tips. Number one, make an exit plan for your stuff. So if that is going to Goodwill, going to a women's shelter, going to um, Vietnam Veterans of America, who I think do, does pickups, call around, call these places, find out what they need, particularly for local charities. I mean, Goodwill, Salvation Army, they'll pretty much take anything. But for, if you if you wanna to go to a specific local women's shelter, for instance, find out what they need. Um, Cause they might be good on clothes. What they might need is bedding, kids toys, toiletries, things like that. Um, so find out what they need before, you know, just dumping all, all your stuff on them. And make an exit plan. So. You want it to be a convenient place. Like if it's a Goodwill drop off, find out um, one that's close to you. If it's just, you know, the bins, be careful because a lot of times the bins only take clothes, which is fine if all you're dropping off that day is clothes. But if you want to drop off, for example, a hundred <laughs> faces, um, you know, find out where that drop off is. And generally it's the ones that are a store that will take, you know, anything. Um, so make the exit plan for your stuff and that can also include making money off of it. I mean, I have some like higher end accessories and, um, shoes, clothes, uh, that I wanted to get, that I wanted to consign basically. Um, so I went to a clothes mentor, which is a chain and got what I could for that, for that stuff. And the rest, you know, went to, to Goodwill. Um, and then the same you can do, obviously for, for exercise equipment, there's a, a, a chain, I believe it's called Play It Again Sports, but there might be other, you know, local ones that take, um, exercise equipment. Uh, 
and early part of the year could be a good time to get a good price for some of those things because you know people are coming in and buying all of that equipment um, for books second and Charles which is a chain has been my go-to um, you can either get you know straight up cash for your books or you can get credit the credit is a lot more generous so I have always taken the credit because I'm a book lover and um, they also have a lot of like like cute sort of gift items so I'd just rather have that credit there and you know have it for whenever I need it because they basically just keep an account for you um, and it's just worth more than, you know, bringing in 50 books and getting, you know, $30, $20, whatever it is. And they don't take everything, but, um, outside they have a, basically where you can put stuff that they don't take. It's a free bin. And so people that are coming to shop, they can take books, um, from the, the free department, <laughs> you know, which is in the one, the one year me is like outside. And I just think that's a really great idea. Um, because there are people that are looking for free books and I I love for books to to go to you know a new home and it just makes me feel good that even if it's a book that I'm not going to use or isn't going to be sold um, that it's gonna have value to, to someone else tip number two and I don't know if this is a tip or a principle <laughs> or advice um, being organized does not give you a pass on tidying up and take it from me and my perfectly rolled drawer of 30 plus black leggings. I'll put a photo here. <laughs> um, being organized does not give you a pass. So, you know, for instance, if I'm trying on a pair of leggings and the waistband doesn't fit anymore or I notice that they're like too worn out black or something like that, I don't roll them up and put them up in the drawer anymore. Um, I now have like a, a nice little like hamper type of thing in my bedroom where I throw everything that I, in that moment of trying it on, I decide I don't want this anymore. And then it goes into that bin and as it, it fills up, I decide is this like consign worthy? Is it donation worthy? Um, or do I just not have enough to consign? I just want to donate everything, whatever. Um, because you can be really tidy, really organized, and just have a lot of stuff that you don't need. And it's not just about, you know, the notion of decluttering or, um, you know, being materialistic or having too much stuff. It's more of like giving that stuff a new home where it can be used. And for me in particular, that's been a lot of electronics. It's been... A lot of clothes, especially um, new clothes that I've never gotten to wear because I've been um, losing weight. Um, and so I just like that idea of being min minimalist, but um, you know, still just being surrounded by things that that I like. Um, because a lot of times, you know, if, especially if you're like, say, someone in debt, I mean, seeing those things that you never use, I mean, it's a real downer because you think, you know, I've had that purse for three years I put it on a credit card that has not been paid off and I don't like this purse anymore I don't use it you know it's time to let it go and stop holding on to negative feelings um, and things that just that bring you down um, my third tip is um, to put it on your schedule um, calendar blocking if you search for it on YouTube there's a lot of videos about calendar blocking and when I first heard about it, I wasn't really sure um, what it meant because it sounds like a lot more, uh, I don't know, involved than it is. And really, it's just scheduling a task like you would a doctor's appointment and sticking to it. So, I mean, if you had a doctor's appointment, a hair appointment um, on, your, on your calendar at 10 a.m., you're going to stick to it. So basically calendar blocking for tidying up is just putting, you know, if you're doing it by the condo method, say it's clothing, you know, put it on Saturday, 10 a.m. clothing and schedule it for realistically how much time you think it'll be, three hours. Um, I did not do the, the condo method in the order that she does it as far as like clothing, um, sentimental items, documents. I did it by area in my house and I'll put the list that I used. It was part of a 30 day declutter challenge. I don't think 30 days is realistic if you um, 
you know, especially if you work, um, because something like laundry room or bedroom could, you know, take a long time. I mean, my bedroom has my closet, it has my, my desk area, um, my gift, my gift cabinet. I mean, those are all things that are going to take me more than a day. Um, so I've sort of scheduled mine by, um, this 30 day challenge, which includes like a desk, a laundry room, clothing, accessories, belts, that sort of thing. And it makes you feel good because if you do like jewelry and belts and accessories all in one day, you get to check off like two or three things. Um, and anyway, the point is, is, you know, to schedule two, I, I schedule two or three things at, ahead of time. So, you know, tomorrow I'm going to put, I have, um, clean out desk at 11 AM right after I do yoga. And I, you know, I don't, I, I think I blocked it for two hours, but this way it's like, you're going to get an alert for it. Um, and hopefully you'll get up and do it. If you've read the five second rule or know about the five second rule, <laughs> that's also a good thing to implement. And that is apparently, unless you physically move to do an action within five seconds, your brain puts it out of your mind because it sees it as, um, something that, you know, in a fight or flight situation, like, oh, this thing is call it causing you anxiety. Let me get rid of it. So unless you physically move to do it in, um, you know, the, the five seconds and generally it's part of an overall goal, not just, you know, anything. Um, but if your overall goal is to do something positive and declutter your life, um, you know, when that alert comes up that says clean out desk, five, four, three, two, one, get up, go upstairs, wherever, and, and start tackling it. So that is my third tip. Put it on your schedule. My fourth tip is actually one of my favorite ones because it's been the, the best way to get me to do a lot of these things. And that is to enjoy your tidying up time. Um, Marie talked about this a little bit in her show. She talked about lighting candles, um, burning incense, that sort of thing. Um, that doesn't really do it for me. What does it for me is a really good audiobook or a Spotify playlist. I love doing Spotify playlists. I have one that, you know, starts with Edge of Glory by Lady Gaga and includes Queen, um, like all of my favorite, like, workout get up and move type of music. And that's what I like to do. It, it motivates me to, you know what, if you're going to listen, if you want to listen to this two hour playlist, you better be doing something. Um, not just, you know, listening it, listening to it in the background. And the good thing is that to listen to a playlist, you have to turn off the TV. And that's like a big time waster for me is I'll just sit in front of the TV and watch, you know, episode after episode of flea market flip. And the next thing you know, you know, two hours is, has gone by. <laughs> Uh, my fifth t tip, and this is um, this is similar to the condo method, and that is group likes with likes. And one example for for this, and especially in saving time, is with batteries and what what I've done with my batteries. Because as I've been going through different areas of my house, I find you know various sizes of batteries. So I might have double A batteries in the junk drawer, but you know maybe in a place where I kept hardware stuff, I had um, C or D or, you know, the nine volt batteries that you put in a, a smoke detector. Um, now, as I'm continuing this process, I've identified the place where I want to keep all batteries. And for me, that's in my, in my pantry. I'll put a picture right here so you can see, um, cause the pantry is one of the first places I, I organized. Um, now I keep all the batteries in this one clear box, uh, in the pantry and if I, the next time I'm looking for a battery, you know, I don't have to think, am I looking, where did I put the AA batteries? Where did I put this or that? I just go to the place where batteries are kept. And I know immediately, okay, I don't have this battery or I do have this battery. Um, this is really helpful for the, the smoke alarm ones because if you don't have a nine volt battery, um, you know, it can be really annoying, that chirping noise. And I have been through that. Um, and so now I think I have like 10 nine volt batteries because um, my house has like, I don't know, eight or nine smoke detectors, you know, basically one in each room. 
and then on, on each floor and it's super annoying um, when they go out and you always want to make sure that you have one. So um, another thing is that I found this helpful with is, you know, when you find yourself um, using the same thing like the good bra <laughs> or, um, you know, the good sheet pan or something like that, um, when you're going through all of your stuff, you know, put all the sheet pans out. You know, maybe you have, say, five sheet pans, but you're always going for that one. Do you need the others? Um, if not, then, you know, donate them. Give them away. Um, same with bras. I mean, if you're always re reaching for the comfortable bra um, and you're not wearing, say, the fancy one with lace that itches and all of that, get rid of it. Um, you know, there's always going to be a lace bra you can buy. <laughs> My sixth tip is if a new organizing method doesn't work, it's okay to start over. Um, for me, this happened, this is where I sort of break from condo, at least in how she presented it on TV, um, with t-shirts. And that's, you know, folding the t-shirts the in thirds and, and vertically, which I think is good. But they look really pretty when it's all solid colors. Um, but that was not functional for me because, you know, I'm not necessarily looking for any white shirt. Um, maybe I want the white shirt with um, the Ramones album on that so I can wear it with, you know, skinny jeans and, you know, whatever else. And I think this is probably more of a, it might be more of a girl problem um, than a boy problem. But, you know, for me, it, it's not as aesthetically pleasing to see all the logos you know facing facing up but it's better for me because not I'm not unfolding and refolding four or five white t-shirts I can see okay that's I can see the sliver of white t-shirt that has you know the remote okay sorry for the interruption I had a phone call but basically what I was saying like it's okay to to switch your system if it's not working um, and so now rather than having the beautiful line of you know solid colors I've added so you can see a sliver of the print if it has a print on the front or you know a screen or whatever it is um, on the front so that I'm not refolding all the time you know I can see I want that specific Ramones white t-shirt um, finally my last tip number seven is to cancel future clutter in your house. So this might mean canceling subscription boxes that, you know, a lot of the items go unused. For me, it was birch box I canceled. I just had so many samples of things. Um, you know, I could not buy eye cream, face lotion, cleanser for the next year and be fine. Um, and a lot of those things aren't gonna last a year. They'll dry up. So I canceled birch box. Um, and if you read my article, I'll, I'll link that one too, about um, Christmas presents that I was uh, suggesting for 2018, I said also cancel giving cl clutter. So, you know, for, that might be, you know, those pre-made gift baskets that come with like the big basket with like the over thing. Um, a lot of people don't use that, if you know, anymore. It's like not their house aesthetic or they're just not you know, interested. So instead, if you're doing something like that, you know, do like more of the wire rimmed or something that can be used again and again that doesn't really have anything to do with someone's like style. Um, but that's like a separate issue, but I'll link to that article. Um, so cancel future clutter. And just as, like a final thing about um, particularly the chapter on sentimental items, those are probably the hardest to let go of. And I'm just now getting into some of those things because I'm really getting into the farthest reaches of my stuff. And some of those things are, are sad and you have to realize what is going to be the um, use of this thing in my future. Where does it fit in? Um, I am 41 years old. Uh, I'm single and I don't have kids. So I think about things like um, you know, school photos of myself, you know, like for me, it's fun to see, it was fun to see my dad and my mom's school photos, but mine might not have a use. I mean, who would I show them for? Um, 
and they're not particularly memorable to me. It's just like, you know, the basic school photos. Um, so I need to find a way to either put them all together or, or recycle them, I guess, is the better way to say than throwing them away. Um, another category for me um, are items like old toys, old bandanas, old dog beds for my dog, uh, Buster, who passed away in 2008. So obviously that's been a long time. And um, there's sentimental value there, but not necessarily value um, because I don't know if another dog would, would use it. Um, it would be the same size and all of those types of things. So I have to think about where does this item fit in my life? Can it be of value to somewhere else? Um, I, I volunteer at a local animal shelter and they're always looking for dog beds. So at least one of the dog beds that, you know, hasn't been chewed <laughs> is going to be going to the animal shelter. And the reason I um, am wearing this for this video is because this is what I think of when I think of um, sentimental items to keep. And one of those things was my dog's ashes. And I found a friend of mine gave me this necklace, um, which you can unscrew, which I'm not going to do. And you can put your dog's ashes, so, you know, obviously some of them, um, in this necklace. And so this is what I have to for my dog. Um, it's like my sentimental item in addition to photos and all those types of things and everything else um, over the years and from this point forward uh, will be donated. And that makes me feel good because I am, you know, very involved at the, the animal shelter and I see some of these dogs and yes, they're in kennels that are, you know, concrete and have fence fences, um, but having those beds and blankets and toys um, it just makes their life a, a little bit better while they're they're waiting to find um, their new family. So that is pretty much all I, I have and just a reminder that this is a hard process but it's such a worthwhile process um, because it's going to make your life easier. Um, it's going to take the the weight of things. Um, it's going to make you more mobile if you're thinking of moving in the future or finding you know a better place to live, um, a place closer to your work. You know, the gigantic act of moving <laughs> is one in itself. And then on top of that, you don't have to worry about also decluttering at, at the same time. You know everything you pack is gonna be stuff that you want to take to a new place. Um, and it just is a way to take some of that stress off of your daily life, but just by taking a couple hours a day or a week um, to make your house a place that is filled with things that make your life better. That spark joy. So thanks for watching and I hope you found this useful. Bye.